And to have that strong uh, connection with your staff, to have them on the same page with you, it's really important to be able to understand their personalities. A lot of people are sitting back and going, right, well, my staff work for me and I'll just tell them what they need to know. Involve them in the decisions. Make them feel like they belong there. Have those discussions with them. Be open and explain to them where you want to see your business going. Sometimes you might talk too much because your personality is such and all they want is the overview and you talk yourself in and out of the sale. And other times you're the opposite to them where they want more information and you don't give them enough and they don't trust you. Well, by able to read them, you know how much information they need, in what order it needs to be given, how they like to respond in any given situation, and therefore present in the time it needs to take. Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of the Make It Happen show, where it's time for you to make it happen. We're joined today by another vision partner of the entourage, Alan Stevens. Alan is a profiling and communication specialist. He can look at a photo of you and tell you everything about yourself. It's actually kind of freaky. He's often described as the mentalist meets Dr. Phil. So in this implementation session, Alan's gonna take you through how being able to read people can really help you manage and communicate effectively with your employees. Also, how you can increase employee engagement and how you can use it to build stronger connections and rapport. And of course, how all these things will help you drive business growth in 2021. A lot of great, very interesting things to learn in this session, let's get into it. G'day there, I'm Alan Stevens. I'm a profiling and communication specialist, which means that I teach people how to read other people more effectively. Your facial features tell me your personality and your body language and expressions tell me your emotions in the moment. And from all of that, you put it all together, you can pick somebody's character very quickly. My background in this has been working with uh, companies like uh, uh, Disney Films, the uh, Gillette, working with uh, federal police, the Australian tax office, with uh, businesses of all sizes, and now with uh, parents and school teachers as well, so that they can understand their children. Because the skills can be used with any age. And that's the main area in which I've been working now for some years. Okay, the main reason for using these skills in business is to be able to build rapport, first of all, with your staff, and then second, with your uh, customers and prospects. They say that the most important thing is looking after your employees because if you look after them the right way, they'll then look after your customers and you'll find that the results will be far more effective. In Australia, leading up to COVID, we had 87% uh, of uh, employees were disengaged in the workplace. And if they're not happy, that was affecting the bottom line with your business. Leading into COVID, then we found that even more people were disgruntled with their organisations. And we found now that new research is showing that more than a uh, majority of people don't want to go back to the workplace. The vast majority want a combination of both and the very smallest number want to go back into the office space. And main reason for that is not just in saving on uh, travel and, uh, and time and cost, but because they're not happy in the office. And so by looking after your staff, understanding their personalities and knowing how to speak to them in the way that they need to be spoken to will give you that connection with them. As they say, we need to be able to work on our business and we can't do that while we're working in our business. And if we have to micromanage our staff all the time, you're never going to be able to work on your business. You need to be able to make that connection with your staff so that they feel that they belong in the organisation. Because we know that, well, think about uh, how you feel or in, in your family, know whether you're loved or not, that you have a, a place that you belong, that you contribute, that you have value, that you're respected there. It's the same thing with your employees. If you don't look after them in a similar way, then they're going to be disgruntled. And the end result is where employ, employees feel that they've been micromanaged, it's like being bullied. Their performance will drop 70%. And all you'll get out of them is a bare minimum. All they have to do just to keep their jobs, that's all they will do. Those that observe other people being disgruntled, their performance drops by 40%. And so you can see that with your fixed costs, that could be more than 50% of your income that you're missing. You're not even getting it through the door. So by looking after your clients and reading them more effectively, you'll grow your business faster. And I've been working with a number of the entourage members in just doing that. They've had staff where they've had problems with them. Now, I've had heard uh, other coaches say to them, look, you're the person, you own the business, be tough with them, tell them what to do, you know, put them in their place. Well, that makes them feel like they've been bullied and their performance drops more dramatically. 
we've got to be able to connect with them. And by being able to read them, understanding their personalities, because that will tell us the things that they love to do and the things that they don't like doing. It'll tell us if they're in a particular role, how to work with them so you can bring out their greatest strengths. Because every trait, we have an upside and we have a downside. The greater the upside, under stress, the downsides will be just as great. So making sure they get the best out of them by making the environment suitable to them, knowing how to get them to work with each other in a team to be more effective. And once we do that, they want to be there on Monday morning. They're looking forward to it. And if they are working from home, then you can be uh, quite assured, you can be relaxed, that you don't have to be checking up on them all the time because they will be trying to perform. And you set their KPIs. You don't look at it on an hourly basis. You look at it from a point of view of a productivity basis. If they can do it in half the time, then that's what you're paying them for. The least amount of time they can do it in and do it proficiently, then they can get on and do other things in their life. And if they are aware that you're allowing them to do that, they're going to even be more loyal again. The same thing then when it comes to reading your clients. I've had one of the entourage members had a, a client who didn't want to pay his full contract that he already completed the job and he was using COVID as an excuse. He also had cancelled his next uh, project with uh, the entourage member. We profiled the gentleman's face, his client's face, told him how to actually go back and talk to this man, meet him at the right level, not above him, not beneath him, but at that right level, get his attention. But also looked at the second project. What would it be worth if he was able to get that in place before COVID was over? The dollar value was quite high. So therefore, when he went back and spoke to him, he said, look, you know, it's a great idea that you actually put the next project on hold while we had a chance to think about it. And now we've, got, we've come up with a better way of doing it so that we'll be able to have that in place by the time COVID's over. And this is where you'll be sitting financially. The uh, client got very excited with that. But as he pointed out to him, it also de you know, it depends on our relationship as how well we do it. You know what we did on the first job. And so subtly remind him about how they'd uh, been able to do that first job. And in that um, message, his client realised that he needed to pay the $50,000 that he was trying to get a discount on the original contract. And so came up with the extra money, started the next project. So by being able to read your client and speak to them in the way that they need to be spoken to will automatically give you a much better connection with them. And at that point, it means more money on the table for you. I've had other clients within the entourage as well who had a um, quoted on a $2 million property. His client wouldn't go above 1.6. We had a look at the two phases of the two partners and realised the one he was talking to about the money, stop talking money, talk value, because this uh, guy's personality was all about that. Talked to his business partner about the money, but also his business partner didn't like doing long-term projects. Get it done, move on to the next one. So talking to the first one, by having the building in the correct uh, setup, they would get clients in faster, which means they could move to the second outlet they wanted to create. And that was the first one had to be the flagship. And from there as well, with the second partner, yes, we'll be able to get this job done quicker. You'll be able to get more money, which means you'll start the next project and get it finished sooner. Well, he had another $150,000 to his quote and signed him off on it. So the bottom line is, they're just two examples of uh, many different examples of within even the entourage that I've worked with. The more you can read your clients and the more you can read your staff, the more effective that you're going to be. And the beautiful part of this is, as I said, I did those readings from photographs where with other profiling systems, you have to watch the person observe and then try and go, okay, is this their normal behavior or is it just the way they're behaving in the moment? With the facial features, websites, LinkedIn profiles, anywhere you can find their face, Facebook, anywhere, you can work out their personality, which means you can prepare your presentation to instead of presenting it in the way that sounds right to you, you can present it in a way that you know has been uh, structured around their facial features that tell you their personality, so, which means then from the moment you walk in the door, you can make an instant connection. Hi everyone, I just wanted to jump in here to let you know if you're enjoying this episode, it doesn't need to stop here. We've taken this episode plus all the other episodes and also video footage from the interviews and made it available for free. There's also a bunch of fantastic guides, tools and resources you can use to grow your business. To grab those tools, just go to www.the-entourage.com forward slash podcast. 
Right, let's get back into the show. Now, if it takes one to uh, 20, or they say now seven to 21 uh, uh, touch points to get a sale, if you're able to read them up front, come in and talk to them though like they're an, an old lost friend, the end result is you're going to be able to cut that from 21 right back towards the seven touch points. So the more you're able to read somebody effectively, the more you're going to be able to get the uh, presentation right, spend the right amount of time with the person. Sometimes you might talk too much because your personality is such and all they want is the overview and you talk yourself in and out of the sale. And other times you're the opposite to them where they want more information and you don't give them enough and they don't trust you. Well, by able to read them, you know how much information they need, in what order it needs to be given, how they like to respond in any given situation and therefore present in the time it needs to take. And that's the best way to be able to make those connections with uh, your staff, be able to read their facial features, know their personalities, understand their body language and recognise their facial expressions and know their emotions in any given moment. If they used to say that if somebody's eyes aren't moving or, or are moving all over the place, you can't trust them. Well, if you're looking at a video of me, you'll notice that my eyes are moving all the time because what I'm doing is sourcing information. I'm looking for things that I can remember, things that I need to then, well, how should I frame this? We look up for uh, a visual re uh, a rep representation of anything. 90% of people, and I fit into the 97%, uh, we will look up to visualise but look over to our left to remember what something looked like. If I look up to my right, then I'm trying to create what it would look like. So first one might be how many windows in the front of my house. If I've got to think, I'll look up to my left. Then I will, somebody says, right, you rip the windows out, you put a bay window in a decking, where would your eyes, how would that look? My eyes are going to look up to the right to get a representation of what it looks like. Same thing with sound. What did such and such sound like? I'll look out to my left to remember it. Okay, what would it sound like if you change this around? Then I look out to the to the, the right side. Visual, sorry, visual up, auditory to the side, but then we have kinesthetic, what it feels like inside and what are our internal dialect, what's going on in our head? We look down. And so I'll think about it when you ask a child, did you do that? And they go and look down, you know straight away. They're worried about being caught out. They probably told you a lie. But what you do is you use this to benchmark where the person uh, looks. So I always use the presentation of just talking about something on the weekend, something I know they've been interested in. It might have been the football. Just see that pass or you see that tackle, whatever it might have been. And I'll look at see where they actually look. Then I know where they look. Then when I ask them a question later on, on a memory, for instance, and they look in the other direction, I know that's not true. So we always look not just where they're looking, but what benchmark it first of all and be able to look at that. So it's a case of being able to read your, your staff more effectively. If you can do that, then you'll have a better connection with them. To have that strong uh, connection with your staff, to have them on the same page with you, it's really important to be able to understand their personalities. A lot of people are sitting back and going, right, well, my staff work for me and I'll just tell them what they need to know. Involve them in the decisions. Make them feel like they belong there. Have those discussions with them. Be open and explain to them where you want to see your business going and what part they can play in that. Not just what you expect from them, but what they can expect from you as well. So that that way they know that they are part of the organisation. As I said before, your staff will know how much they belong there and how much they're going to work for you depends on, as I said before, how much they feel that they belong. So the more that you're able to build that relationship with them, and let them uh, chat amongst themselves as well. There was a push with time management to cut out the, uh, the coffee machines, the water coolers and things like that and get everything very close to people. But we are social beings and the most effective businesses, two thirds of the conversation through the day is idle chit chat. What you did on the weekend? What about that movie? I just, uh, have you been on holidays recently? Those conversations are important and involving yourself in those as well. Not trying to be their buddy, you've still got to be their uh, their boss, but at the same time, show them that you care about them, ask a few questions about the family, et cetera. Make them feel that you're, you're just not looking at them as a source of making income, 
but you realize that the happier they are and the more the more productive they will be as well so you're doing it for that reason as well even point that out to them so being honest with your staff is one of the most important things and leading into COVID, there wasn't too much of that and that's why so many businesses uh, either went out of business or struggled all the way through so thanks for listening to me. I uh, hope you got a lot out of this today. If you'd like to uh, keep in touch, as I said, my website's alanstevens.com.au. You'll also find me on uh, Facebook. Just look up Celebrity Profiler or Reading pa uh, Faces will take you to my business page. I'm also running the Campfire Project, which is especially if you're going through tough times and you want somewhere to go to be able to just chat to people to uh, get ideas on how to move forward. The Campfire Project uh, is also there on Facebook as well. Always happy to have you there. It's a safe place for both men and women to come along and tell their stories. And so you'll find a lot of other business people who are chatting there as well. So having support going into 2021 is going to be uh, quite important. So uh, that's the best places you'll find me, Facebook and also on LinkedIn as well. Happy to have you join me there. Thank you and uh, we'll see you later on. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Make It Happen Show. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. And it doesn't need to end there. We've actually gone and grabbed a whole bunch of extra resources for you. Behind the scenes footage, videos from this and all the other episodes, as well as show notes that you can grab for free. Just head along to www.the-entourage.com slash podcast and you can grab all those extra resources. Thanks for tuning in and I cannot wait to introduce you to our next guest on the next episode.